Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hello, the most welcome to Heart and Soul. This is the second part of our interview with former Black Star striker Augustin Ahimfu, holding a very prestigious position at the Ghana Football Association as they develop and etch the very best footballers from the very, you know, lower levels to the very highest level. Something he has gone through, seen it all at the underage competition to the very highest. And Karakuchu Dotmon playing for the Black Stars. Good day, most welcome to the show. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I hope you're doing well. I'm very well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a video we have some really good, you know, old time videos of you scoring. <laughs> and <laughs> when I say old time, old I mean, news. can you just run us through this? I mean, for anybody who doesn't know, um, you know, I guess, I think this is Ankara, Ankara, Ankara Gucci, yeah. Turkey. This was this game was against Besiktas in Ankara. Okay. Yes. In total, you scored what forty four goals in two different you know, periods playing for Ankara. This game, <laughs> Besiktas had. This was 2002. Okay. They had a striker who scored so marvelous, uh, ma magnificent goal against Italy or something in the semi final. Okay. In, in Japan, South Korea. Ilham Nasis and the rest were in this squad. Okay. And they had come to Ankara. They were leading us. So you could see that when I scored, I immediately went for the ball. Mm. Yeah. We you were down. Up, yes, we were down. But we, we, we ended up playing 3 3 or so in this match. And this was Ohini Kennedy had the ball now. Okay. This was against a club called Malatia. Malatia. Malatia, yes. Ooh. This was against Malatia in Ankara. I scored a hat trick in this match. Okay. Uh -huh. So that was the head. You can score with the head, the you can score game, the foot. The same game. The same right. game. And he Kennedy was there. He was a half captain. volley. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Is he still around on Kennedy? He's in the US now. He's in the USA. Mm. He played for dwarfs, eh? Yes. 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 He had an injury. Uh, to the knee and he couldn't read really, and you know he's a heavy yeah guy so yeah. bow legged his, uh, upper this thing could not so he left okay and i've never played under any coach and this was against also malatia the return match okay yes you see snow all over mm. is it those white yeah by the side it's all snow i, I experienced snow uh, in <laughs> sweden last year you can even see from the grass how how is it like how is it how easy is it to play this know? was also against besiktas in istanbul okay. there was a corner kick against us that's me coming from there all right quick counter attack yes and here we go i saw the goalkeeper come out already you had seen me yes when i moved i knew he was there because the corner kick he moved out all right so when i was sprinting i knew he was out and he was a danish national team goalkeeper thomas Murray at the time wow he said he never. I read something of him last week. He said he never considered a goal like that before in his career. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that's him. <laughs> uh, this wow. was against Trabzon in Ankara. All right. So, what what made you so good? They say you are one of the people who, who you always had your no, head you know, in. Turkey. When I went to Turkey, the coach was playing a three-five-two format. Three-five-two. Yes. Three center backs, five in the middle, and then two up front. Okay. And I was playing behind Ohini Kennedy. And but the text didn't really know me that well, especially when it comes to my head. But I'm not that tall. And so they never but I was <laughs> very good with my head. And so I always liked coming from the midfield without anybody, and then I will I'll walk through and then I'll go and score. And that they could not pick me out. Mm -hmm. All the goals that I score, you could see me. It's, I just come pump because when you are a ghost, when they are going, I follow the ball. I know where the ball might end, so I'll take my position over there. And most of the goals that I scored, this was against uh, Sakaria Sport, I believe. Wow! In in no, uh, you know, it was against Denis Lispo in Denis Lee. We recent we watched this some was, of the this league. This was Cameroon yeah. national team goalkeeper there. Yeah, looks like him. Very bulky guy. <laughs> yes. This was a. You see, they never saw me that good that not all. So I came with my head, pam, is there. This go, I scored two goals with my head in this match. I scored a hat trick actually in this match. We we watched the quality of this. And then we want to compare with the local league, but I also maybe will ask no. maybe the most salient question. How do we get this kind of level, especially looking at the spiritual and the, the yeah. sort of things we do locally, which we feel is aids us, you know, in winning matches. But this was you, and you didn't have any juju somewhere no. in your shoes or some talisman at your back. It, me, it, it was not me. 
This was Galatasaray. Okay. In Ankara. Look at this goal. Look. Did you do you practice yeah, this? Yeah, this game we beat Galatasaray. Okay. This is Mondragon in the goal, a Colombian national goalkeeper. If you heard of him. Okay. Mondragon. I'm just watching the, yeah. the counter attack. Is this something you you actually practice? Yeah, at, people uh, didn't know. I was very quick, but people didn't know that. So immediately, I begin to sprint. Uh, I'm uh, ahead of you. Yes, when I was playing, so I would just be in the middle, running normally, and I'm reading where the ball is going to end up. So the moment I take off, unless the pass does not come before me. The moment I take off, and before I even arrive at the ball, I've decided what I'm going to do. You saw what I did against Galatasaray. I controlled the ball as if I was stopping. I moved and I shot. Because when I moved, the defender was here already. So if I had hesitated in maybe trying to do anything. So I just slowed down. I wanted him to also slow down. And then quickly I dribbled and I shot. Yes. So you should always think ahead of the defender. Like now, when I play football, I always play at the back. And people ask me, why you played from there? You are, yeah, I've grown, I've understood the game. And so, even if I play with active players, Erasmus, it's very difficult for them to outweigh me. Because I read the game when the opponent has the ball. So I'm only looking at his eye to know where he's going. So the moment he passes the ball, I am there, I intercept. So you should always be able to read what the opponent is coming to do. But now I'm able to do that because of my level of coaching and understanding of the game properly. But if you are able to do this and attack, look, there was this competition that I, I spoke to. There's a guy, great Corinthians, the ones that won the cup. They had mm -hmm. this number six player. And Lai Kingston was so fond of that player. Why? Because the moment the ball breaks loose, he's there. He's reading the game, he breaks from their defenders, he's there to tackle. So you can have such a player as a block for the back, for like N'Golo Kante he does. He's always reading, so the moment the ball breaks, he's there to tackle. There are few players who have that eye to do that. And I can see that I did have that. So you are pre the rest, I met them in Turkey, but uh, they can tell you. Can it be taught? Yeah. yeah, you can teach somebody to do that, but you should also... You have, you should have that in you. Should be inbuilt. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now I ask all these questions mm. as just a background to the the, the main discussion we want yeah. to do here, which is spirituality in football, yeah. especially relating to the black stars, yeah. because certain utterances have come out recently. I'm sure as CFA, as you know, a member of the juvenile committee, you would have followed it from Derek Boateng, which is the most prominent one. Ni Lante. Kobna Ebua, who sends us all the way back to 1978. The effect of spirituality on our game, particularly the negative aspect of it. And I wonder what can be done about it to, you know, retrain the minds of our footballers into thinking that if I practice, if I just implement A, B, and C, I'm going to be able to get there. I think I, I once again tell you that it is because of the administrators handling the team. I hear, me, I have not experienced when I play for Black Stars, when I play for under 20, national under 17, no. I never experienced things like that. But I can tell you for a fact that we had gone to pray with a so-called uh, pastor, whatever at the time, before a game. And I seen Mr. Fianu in a, in a <laughs> football shorts at the time, because he was our team manager. I think I know the story. And, and he had told Mr. Fianu he was going to score a goal. Fianu was a team manager yes. was going to score the goal. Yes. So you should know. But sometimes... I, I hear he looked young. Yes. Days, in a, he was very young amongst us, and most of us were taller than him at the time. So <laughs> in, a, in a shot like that, he felt he was one of us. And so he was going to score. You see, these things are psychological. And... If, if you don't deal with it properly, the players involved will feel that these things aid them. Currently, if somebody is in the black stars, so-called, and that person believes in this juju thing, then I don't know where that person is coming from. Because 
Most of the players play out there. Yeah. Because was these things are not practiced out there. So unless that singular person within the team believes in that thing and so he wants to do something. You remember the year Leicester City won the league? Yes. They were actually flying Thai monks mm -hmm. to the team. They'll come to the dressing, even mm -hmm. by the touchline. Mm -hmm. Jamie Vardy will have to go and kiss a particular Tim. object mm -hmm. before they will play a game. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether they anointed them, there was water. Mm -hmm. the, the, some rituals were yeah. done in their dressing rooms. Yeah. Yes, I saw, I saw a ritual yeah. being done. So when we say it's not mm -hmm. done outside the... This I've never... It's the first time. I don't know what they brought them to do. I never uh, saw and they won them the physically. Yeah. They won the league, yes. So, okay, let me ask you this question. If that particular thing that the monk were doing, why are they not doing now currently when the team is going down? To be able to propel them up. Back to that level again. To that level. I mean, those things, are, I'm saying, they are psychological. Look, at one point in time, Ankara Guju, we kept losing matches. After we had won the first two league matches, we won 1-8-0, we, not, we won the subsequent one 6 1, and then we lost the fourth match narrowly. We lost the fifth match, we lost the seventh match, we lost the eighth match. Lost... And everybody was confused. What did they do? They brought a psychologist to some, come and psych all of us up. And then the next game was a derby in Ankara against Genshabili, is our neighbors. Ankara with the training facility here, Genshabili, it's just a wall in between. It was a derby in Ankara. The Friday before the match, the whole team was driven to go and watch a movie. This was suggested by the psychologist. A psychologist? Yes. In the afternoon, we finished training. We are going to say nobody should go home. Ah, we are angry. We sat in a bus. Nobody drove their own car. Our cars were parked at the club. We sat in the same bus, drove to a big shopping mall in Ankara and watched the movie. I didn't understand the Turkish language then. There was this old Turkish guy, funny guy, and the people were laughing on the floor, the players were all over the place. And guess what happened? We beat the Genshabili people the next Sunday. You got, you got the team relaxed, your minds were yes. taking off the yes. pressures. Yes. And then we, after that game, we never lost any game till the season ended. For the history of Ankara, we have not even finished maybe six. We finished third. That year, to the extent that we beat Galatasaray in Istanbul, Galatasaray that had Tafarel, the Brazilian goalkeeper, had Popescu, the defender, Romania, had Haji, had Caponi, hmm. had Hassan Shash, had all these Turkish, Akanshuku, and all of them. We beat them 2 1 in Istanbul. So, what did it mean? Now, you were watching the movies. We just before. watched that one singular movie, just and that one. was it. After we won one, the spirit came back. So, I don't know why 2022 people still believe that this thing is the one that is going to aid them. I don't want to share this on red, uh, TV. Yeah. But probably maybe in private. Some coaches involved in the local league are, are really, really into that. They also believe in it. And so, if a coach, so called worth a shot, he believes that something that somebody had told me or done for him is going to aid his team to win. Then we have a long way to go. So I'm saying that if the officials do not bring this thing around the players, the players by themselves do not go out there to go and do those things. Trust me. It, I mean, some of the things we heard, for instance, from the last AFCON were, were really, you know, disturbing to hear. Mm -hmm. Players bringing malams to the team, 12 midnight. Individual players in the national team doing this. I mean, names were mentioned and all that. We've seen videos on the internet, people sprinkling, sprinkling water Stop. objects on the, on the ground. This is one of the black stars mm. of Ghana. Why should that be the case? And then George Amwakun, the mm. former management committee chairman of the yes, FA, 2020 mm. makes that statement that players, some players were finding it difficult joining the team. You know, those born out, out there in Europe, and they, they cited the issue of Juju as the main problem. I mean, when it came from him, then everything became more like official. This is the reason they don't want to play for the Black Stars. And I would say, wow, it goes that deep. 
Just because people have been saying it, that person that supposedly maybe said that has or probably not been invited to the national team before. Somebody is saying it out there. Somebody is saying it out there. I remember Siki Akono, our former coach, national team, spoke to this Jer Jeremy Duku or something, yeah. one place for the Belgium national team, yeah. and he said that thing to Siki Akono, that he hears that there's Juju in the Blasters. Ooh. Who told him? Before he played for the Belgium national team, Siki really wanted him to come and play for us. And wow. he said, this is what he had heard. He's somebody who maybe was not even born in Ghana. Yeah. Staying in Belgium and having that that thought. Who told him? So I, I think that sometimes Erasmus, we talk too much. We want to brag about things that really do not exist. I'm not saying that there is no medicine. No, no. I'm not saying there's no juju thing. No. But I'm saying that if you believe in these things, seriously, as a footballer, you will not end up properly well. I'm saying. Top players like Rona Messi, they do their own thing when they score, they do a sign of cross and do whatever, kiss the grass and move on. But to say that they practiced certain things with the team or individually before they go and then perform, no, no, no. Look, in Europe, when I went to Grasshoppers, on the day of the match, we trained. On the day of the match, we never went for camping. We came into the club at the uh, Zurich. They call it Hatum. Hatum is the name of the stadium. In the morning, we train. We do shake-ups, crosses, few and there. After that, we, we shower. The bus drives us to the hotel. Go and eat lunch. Relax maybe one hour. Drive to the stadium. Come and play. After that, you move your car. You are off. You go home. We only went for camping when we were traveling out of Zurich. Maybe we are going to Lausanne, Lausanne, whatever. That way you have to go and sleep there. So you travel and go. And I was like, sometimes you go for camp for two days here in Ghana to go and play one match. And you still go and lose. And here we are. We didn't even go for camping. We met in the morning in our suit, change, train, Change back, go to hotel, go and eat, come back and come and play and win. So what it is? I, I wish you enter a dressing room of a, a top club. You see a very big radio set there, a CD player on it. Blaring music. Blaring music. Butcha, butcha, butcha. They don't care. Some players are motivated by, by those things. Oh, we need to demystify. I think, I think it's hard time. It's hard time. We, we, we stop these things. Somebody was telling me that House of Oak Olympics, <laughs> the Olympics captain went to House of Oak dressing to do this inspection. And when he came back, and a House of Oak captain came into the address, he said, look, when you came, you didn't see any fire or uh, smoke here. When I came to your place, it was full of smoke in your dressing room. Really? The health implications of smoke in the dressing room. So. Erasmus, who is I mean, I think that 21st century, we should be above this. Seriously. All right. Well, great, great uh, message coming from uh, Augustine and Infla. At this stage, we'll do a quick break. And when we we'll come back, we'll give you the DJ you know, segment and also delve in some other aspects of the game. Inaki Williams is Tariq Lamte. is also now in the national team. And we're getting ready for Qatar 2022. After this, we'll talk. Is there a supernatural dimension in football? A world beyond the one we know? Does Juju play football? Does God care who wins a football match? Can the outcome of matches be determined by forces outside the football field? What is the impact of faith in sports? Are there negative effects of Juju, black magic on footballers? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Let us join Erasmus Kwao as he investigates the strange world of the supernatural in sports on Heart and Soul every Saturday at 11 a.m. on Lifestyle TV. It is life redefined.
Right, most welcome back. And so we're just in the home straight trying to finish out the second uh, interview that we have with Augustine Ahifu. But let's do the Did You Know segment. A very interesting story. And this is coming from a Chinese skating national team coach. And this <coughs> is specifically the details of what she said. She says, believing in your heart is what true faith is. It means that you believe in something that really exists. Everything you succeed in is something he helped you succeed in, even maintaining peace in your heart. Sometimes it's hard to get that inner joy and satisfaction. You can only get this balance and joy because God is helping you. As Lian, Olympic short track um, speed skating gold medalist in the 500 meters, and also world championship gold medalist in the fi uh, 500 meters, you know, race and then thousand meter race, and she's a former Chinese national team coach. Talking faith and how you know it works out. It's a it's a matter of the heart, and so it it's is. not too much about what you go in and put out on the it is. on the it field. Is. I mean, look, when I was in Switzerland, my manager told me, Mr. Fogo. The club manager, he said, look, Augustine, everything you do in life, follow what your heart tells you. Because the heart, when the heart and the mind is corresponds and is the same decision, it's a very perfect decision. But when it's only the mind, sometimes your mind is telling you to go and do this. But when your heart tells you that, do this thing, that follow that one. I said, why? Then he picked uh, something like a needle on his table and he just stabbed me with it like that. I said, Acha, Acha. You know why he said, Acha, Acha. It's the heart. So when I stab you with this thing and you feel it, you will not take the same thing and stab your, op your opponent or your colleague. Because you know that the, the pain that you've gone through, that person is going to go through that pain. And it's the heart telling you that. But your mind will tell you if you don't follow the heart, you just stab the person and that person is gone. So let's follow the heart. Like what the Chinese, this is a country that does not believe in God properly. Yeah. But she as an individual believes in what she believes in. Yeah. Excellent. She yes. had quite an experience, a whole story on, yeah. on her own. But accepting and believing in Jesus Christ is something that she talks about, you know, fondly. Now, let me just take this perspective. This is from Moses Fuamuni, lawyer and journalist. And he's talking about the blacks. As he says, as Ghanaians and for that matter Africans, we believe in spirituality and to avoid so-called Jiu problems in the black stars camp, the management team must put in place a structure that appoints an official pastor and an imam for the team. No individual should be allowed to bring their own spiritualists to the camp. Could this be the solution? <laughs> Erasmus, no individual is allowed to bring any spiritual person Their own to personal spiritualists No, I don't. I, like, I played Blasters from... The first I was invited was 93. We through to 2003, there about on and off and on off. I never saw anybody bring somebody their to come own personally that this is my spiritualist. No. Because that is what we heard from the last the time. time, for instance, yeah. we had this pastor, I think his name is Joe, who was every night praying with us. And I remember when we went to Kumasi to play South Africa in the quarterfinal. He said, if we lose that match, then there's no God. Who said that? That pastor, that so pastor. called. Yes. To the extent that he gave us bread and, and communion wine. He was giving us a communion or something. But we lost the game to South Africa 1 0. You get me? So. And then what did he say? Oh, what you, could he have said? Did you see him again? Yeah, he was with us. But myself and Stephen Bade were just laughing at him. <laughs> Seriously. I, because you cannot be emphatic like that. I can only give you hope that we've prayed enough. And so let's believe in what we've put before God and trust in Him that He will be able to do it for us or He will do it for us. Because He Himself says that we should knock and the door will be open. We have knocked His door by singing and clapping and all that. He has opened the door. What is your request, Erasmus? Oh, Daddy, my request is okay. I've heard you. Believe in it. And He has to do it. Whether it's today or tomorrow, He will do it. But He knows that the game is tomorrow. So Long, long suffering. Yes. So we have to endure that. Me, I believe strongly that one day, one day, Ghana will win the Nations Cup. Again. I'm not going to say it's next one or the one after, but I know in my heart that we will definitely win the Nations Cup again because there is time for everything. Today or yesterday was probably for Senegal 
tomorrow is for us. What do we do to make sure that tomorrow will come and meet us and meet us well? That is to prepare, make sure that we do the right things, pick the right players, find the fine-tuned solution, proper tactic strategy for them. Well, to other sides, he made mistakes, especially with the selection. And a lot of people are looking at Inaki Williams. What does he bring to this team? He made mistakes, yes. He's confessed that he made mistakes. Because those of us, technically, you are not a tanker person, but I know that you saw what he did wrong. I felt that the format we played in the second half should have been the format we should have started with. Because, you see, you have a Brazilian team that plays also three at the back. They are playing Marquinhos, they are playing Silva, and they are playing uh, Militao. And then they are playing uh, Teles, and then... Uh, Rafinha, more or less, and then playing Venetius, playing Patakia, Casimiro, playing Neymar and Richarlison. They are so wide, yet so close. So what do you do? Do I play four back? I also play three back and five in the middle. At any given time, your back can be five. You understand? When you are playing three, five, two. When you're going to attack, you have five in the middle. When you're defending, you can have five at the back, and you bring your midfielders to come and augment the defense. You didn't, I didn't see that in the first half. You played four back. Odoi, Raman, Amante, Juku, and Baba Raman on the left. And we played... Ayer Thomas Pate was injured during Roma. We yeah. played Idrisu, Didi Ayu, in the middle. and Kudus. And we played Afenya Jan, and they played Kamal, Kamal Din Suleiman. We left this young man alone up front. Now, I've seen a lot of people write about Jan. What did he do wrong? What was the services to him? Okay. We, we, we have less than one minute to go, but just, yes. just try and wrap up the point. So, uh, if he said he made a mistake, yes. But uh, Nyaki Williams came in, he was more right side. The day was pushed a little bit forward, Kudus and Idrisu, and he worked. And we have players in there. If Thomas is not available, the other players who he has to try because okay. Nicaragua against Nicaragua, he can he can play other players that he's not so sure of. But you think Asamojan should return to the team? Oh, I don't want to go there. Let's leave it there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. Well, many thanks again to uh, um, Augustine Ahimfo. Also for Augustine Ahimfo, I need to say that he gave us a Galatians quote. Galatians five twenty two. <laughs> go and read it every day. Long suffering, you make it. <laughs> so life is a test, is a trust, very temporal. So seek your maker while you have your being. Give your life to Christ. Good day till we meet again.